We're now going to look at the fundamental concepts for delivering high velocity IT. There are seven areas we're going to focus on. Ethics, safety culture, lean culture, Toyota Kata, lean, agile, resilient, continuous, service dominant logic, design thinking and complexity thinking. Ethics is a system of principles which define what is good for individuals and society. The key message with regard to high velocity IT is that we need to think about what we do and how it affects other people. So if we're delivering an IT system, if we're delivering IT services, the key thing is to think about how it's going to affect other people. There's an old saying of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's not correct in actual fact. What you should do is do unto others as they want you to do unto them. And the only way you can know what they want you to do to them is to ask them. So think about other people, but make sure you talk to other people and you get their input and ask them what they want. That's the key message for ethics. Safety culture is a climate in which people are comfortable being and expressing themselves. The reason this is important is if people feel comfortable, if they feel that they can express themselves, they'll be more productive. So obviously that's important for high velocity IT. If people feel at work they're having to put on an act, uh, be someone else, be who they're expected to be, uh, they're going to be less productive. And I think over certainly over my career what I've seen is moving from uh, you know, wearing a suit, a white shirt and a tie, very much suited and booted, even when I was programming, um, to much more acceptance of, of different dress. So there, there, is a, there is a place for that, but uh, I think when I see people coding these days, they tend to be far less formally dressed uh, and maybe feel more comfortable and therefore be more productive. A lean culture is characterised as a work environment where trust, respect, curiosity, inquiry, playfulness and intensity all coexist in a plasma of learning and discovery. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what, a, uh, what a spaghetti of words, what a jumble of words uh, to try and unpick. Um, let's just take them very quickly one at a time. Trust. I need to trust you, you need to trust me. If we don't then uh, we're not going to get very far. Um, and, I, and part of that really is respect, um, that I respect you and your skills, knowledge and experience uh, and also as a human being and, and you do the same for me. Curiosity, that's really partly about making things better. You know, how does this work? How can I make it better? Um, why does this work in this way? Why was this decision made? You know, often people accept things and say, well, this is just how we do it. Well, why? Uh, and nobody can really remember why. Um, it, why the decision was made, why that process or procedure was created. So try to be curious and, and that's a great driver for improvement, as is inquiry. Inquiry obviously follows on from curiosity. Um, Playfulness is part of being relaxed, and we're talking about the safety culture, but um, having uh, a playfulness, keeping people happy, people relaxed, like, you know, people used to talk about letting off steam, that helps with that. And you know, the, the balance with that is that intensity. So if we want to be you know, at it, as when I used to coach football, we talked about people being at it, being focused and committed and working, working hard, but having a playfulness that goes with that can uh, just relax everyone and make sure people don't get stressed. So have that intensity, but the playfulness can stop people uh, being stressed. Um, and yeah, the learning and discovery, obviously, uh, learning and discovery is part of that uh, continual improvement and reducing waste. Lean, fundamentally, lean's about reducing waste. So we're focused on trying to reduce waste. Toyota Kata is a pattern for scientific thinking and routines for practice and coaching. It follows a four-step improvement process based on five questions. 
What are we trying to achieve? Where are we now? What obstacle is in our way? What's our next step and what do we expect? When can we see what we've learned from taking that step? And here you can see the four steps. Understand the direction, grasp the current condition, establish the next condition and experiment towards the next target condition. So you can see that very much aligns with agile thinking and just focusing on the next sprint, the next step the next iteration, where we want to be next, how we can improve. Lean, agile, resilience and continuous are dominant characteristics of common high velocity IT approaches. Lean helps to improve throughput and reduce waste. Agile adds close cooperation with users. Resilience is achieved through DevSecOps, site reliable engineering and rugged software. Continuous is the use of continual integration and continuous development. Service dominant logic is a mental model of economic exchange in which stakeholders co-create value by applying their competences and other resources. So this really aligns with one of the big changes from ITIL version 3 to ITIL 4, where in ITIL version 3, it was a good dominant logic where we thought of as a service provider providing service and value to our customer, whereas now we're thinking much more about co-creation of value with our customer. Design thinking refers to the cognitive and practical processes by which design concepts are developed. Quality of digital products and customer experience are paramount. Design thinking helps practitioners create better digital products, create better customer experiences, help get customers jobs done and design user experience, not goods. Complexity thinking is the understanding that some systems are unpredictable because their boundaries only partially constrain the agents that act within the system and the agents modify the boundaries. Kinevin is a sense-making framework to deal with complexity. It defines five domains. Obvious, where there is clear causality and we can apply predetermined best practice. Complicated, unclear but knowable causality. We can analyse using expertise and then apply good practice. Complex. Unclear, unknowable causality, where we use safe to fail experimentation and there may be emergent practice. Chaos, extreme complexity. Here we should take immediate action and assess the outcome because it's just novel practice, no one's done it before. And finally, disorder in the centre not knowing which domain applies. So check that you're not assuming the domain you know best, i.e. you're trying to fit the problem into your domain where you're comfortable, maybe with your best practice or your good practice. Are you really addressing the complexity?